Good morning. Um, I'm getting ready to plant my broccoli and my cauliflower and my cabbage because we're expecting three days of rain coming up tomorrow. So I want to get these plants in the ground and give them the best chance of making it through the fall. And I definitely have enough room in the garden to do that. So let's go plant some broccoli and some cauliflower and some cabbage. And let me show you what the plants look like real quick. There's my beans. Okay, so down here I've got some broccoli. These babies are the cauliflowers, I believe. Let's see. Yeah, I'm pretty sure these are the cauliflowers. And um, these are more broccoli, and then these are cabbage. So the cabbage and the broccoli seem to be doing great. The cauliflower is the one that I'm worried about, but I think they're gonna make it. And then here's some more broccoli. So I have like the old bean bed, the onion bed, and the garlic bed from the spring to plant. So I think I'll have enough room. Um, anyways, so let's get into doing the planting. I'll show you guys what the beds look like before and after. All right, this is the bed that we had the onions in for the spring. Um, I have some petunias down there at the end. That's what those white flowers are. And then this is some geraniums. There's no flowers on it right now, but. So I need to pull the few dandelions out of this bed, and then I'm gonna fill this bed with the broccoli. So I will show you guys what it looks like as soon as I finish putting in all the new plants. Hey guys, um, I just left the grocery store. I got some limes and some ginger root because I'm gonna do some spiced, or no, what is it called? Ginger pear preserves is what I'm trying to say. Um, Cause I have those pears at home that I still need to process. And then I'm also going to make some apple butter with some of the apples that I have. And I found bags of mixed frozen vegetables for 85 cents a piece. So that was a huge, huge steal. Um, I bought six of these. And I also got two boxes of stuffing because you guys know sometimes I eat that for a meal. And um, that was what I got from all these. Now I need to go to the other grocery store and see if I can find some sweetened apple cider to make some. I can't remember which recipe I need it for, but it's something for the apples. Um, and I also need to get some coffee. So I got the cauliflower, the cabbage, and the broccoli in the ground. I realized that I didn't record the end of that, but I'll show it to you guys here in just a little bit. I'll go show you guys what it looks like as soon as I get home. And it's already getting hot. It's only like 9.30 in the morning and it's getting really warm. So let's go get some coffee.
Hey everyone, I am going to start my day by preserving some apples and pears and this stuff right here is all the stuff that I just pulled out of the garden this morning. So I need to take some steps to get this stuff ready. The cucumbers, this is on a bed of ice with some pickling salt and I'm going to fill it with cool water to cover the cucumbers and let them soak in the pickling salt in the cold water for two hours before I pickle them. And then I think I'm probably just going to freeze the okra. I don't know what I'm going to do with the peppers. I have so many peppers. I don't know what to do with those. Um, I'm going to have to think about that a little bit. But first of all, let's fill this with some water. And get these bad boys chilling. And then I'm going to start with the ginger spice pear preserves. I bought the limes and the ginger from the store that I needed to do that. It's going to be a big day of preservation. And I think all the recipes I'm doing today are water bath canning recipes. So stay tuned for a huge day of preservation. And I will be right back. Um, I went ahead and threw this okra in a freezer bag, and I'm going to throw this in the freezer. So, another bag of okra. I decided to go ahead and make some more hot sauce with the peppers that I harvested. This isn't all of them. There's still some over there. Um, so, this is how you make hot sauce fermented. You put the jalapenos in there with the miniature bell peppers and then you ferment it all together. Um, these are some of the jars that I have started within the last four to six weeks. And you can kind of see the different stages. This one is the oldest one and the fluid isn't nearly as clear as like this one or this one, but these three haven't been fermenting quite as long. So this one, this one, and this one are gonna go back in the cupboard. This one I'm going to blend up into some hot sauce today. You just throw everything in the blender and then you've got fermented hot sauce. Um, so this is the beginning stages of what that will look like. I still need to put the water on there and the salt. And here is one that I had started a couple weeks ago and it has some white yeast on the top of it. So I'm gonna go ahead and scrape that off and um, this is actually kind of a good indication that you're doing it correctly. So you just scrape it off, throw it in the sink, scrape off some more, and uh, try not to break up the yeast too much. And then what's left that you can't scrape out, you can just shake back into your fermentation. Um, it literally does not hurt you to eat this, but some people don't like how tangy it tastes, so I take it out. Um, and then this will be hot sauce in just a couple weeks. And yeah, so this is some of the steps I take to make sure that my ferments stay sanitary. And again, this white yeast would not kill me. If I wanted to eat it, I could. It literally just adds like a tangy, zippy taste to the sauce. But my husband doesn't really care for that zippiness. So I went ahead and scraped it out and then I'll just put the fermentation cap back on here and leave the weight in there for a little bit longer and this one will go back in the cupboard. But since I went ahead and checked all my other fermentation devices, I can blend up one of these. So I just got another airlock and another lid freed up. So I might ferment the green bell peppers I have with some onion because the fermented peppers and onions are really good. Okay, I have these lined up from the youngest to the oldest. The two oldest ones are gonna get blended up today. Um, the very first one is the one I'm going to add water to right now, and then the next three are ones that I have started within the last couple of weeks. So you can kind of see the difference in terms of the clarity of the liquid and how the one on the end, the liquid almost looks green. Um, everything is going according to plan. So I just 
mixed up this water solution. I'm going to dump it on here so that I can make another jar of hot sauce. And you make sure that you cover everything in the jar, including the weight, and then leave a little head space. So that's my youngest jar of hot sauce. And then it goes to the oldest ones. And I will let you guys know how this hot sauce turns out as soon as I get it in the blender. I'll taste it and see how spicy it is. Also, these two jars of pickles that I have had fermenting, I believe they are ready to go in the freezer. So I'm gonna go ahead and take the weights out and the airlocks off and place these, these uh, pickles in the refrigerator. These could be stored in a cellar if it was like 55 to 60 degrees, but my cellar runs at about 70, so I don't wanna risk it. I'm gonna, until the cellar gets down to the temperature I need it to, I'm gonna go ahead and put these in the refrigerator. These jars of pickles that I said I was gonna put in the refrigerator, they do both have this white yeast on them. So again, I'm just gonna do the same thing that I did with the peppers, just gently, Pull the yeast off in one piece, if you can, and then these will be good to go to get in the refrigerator. And these are the pickles, the fermented pickles. If you've been watching my channel for a while, you know that I love this book by Shannon Stonger. It's called Traditionally Fermented Foods. If you're wanting to get into fermented foods, get this book. It's, I think it was like $12 on Amazon. Um, so for the peppers and sauce, it says to make a mild hot sauce, blend the peppers with brine in a blender and, or work them through a food mill. For a true hot sauce, substitute the hot peppers for at least half of the sweet peppers, which I have half jalapeno, half sweet pepper and then ferment as recommended and proceed with recipe as written. So I have already got these fermented for, it says three weeks, but I did it for one month. So I'm gonna go ahead and throw these in my food processor and blend these puppies up and I will show you what they look like as soon as I get the sauce made. Look at this stuff, look how pretty it is. That's one batch. I still have to do this batch. But look at that hot sauce, yo. Okay, I got the one jar of hot sauce in the refrigerator and I tasted it and it's actually really tasty. I was surprised that it isn't more spicy. I could for sure eat this on some eggs or something delicious like that. So I'm gonna go ahead and blend up this other jar and make another jar of hot sauce. And then I'm gonna start on the pears and the cucumbers and blah, 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 blah. It does not get any easier than this. Like, and literally didn't use any heat, didn't have to refrigerate it. Like this is literally just the most shelf stable this is so awesome. Um, I have my second jar of hot sauce done. So now it's time to get into the nitty gritty of the rest of the preservation for today. All right, I finally have finished with everything that I picked out of the garden today, aside from the cucumbers, which I am going to start now. Um, I decided to do the bread and butter version again because I just don't see how you can ever have too many bread and butter pickles. So I'm going to get these beauties in some jars and I will be back with another recipe here in just a little bit. And here is the recipe I am using. If you guys are wondering, it's from this book, Complete Book of Home Preserving. It's a ball book and I did check it out from the library. I'm probably gonna buy this one at the end of the season because it's been so impactful and I have really enjoyed pretty much every single recipe that I've tried. So 
the traditional bread and butter pickles are what I'm gonna conquer now and then I will bring you guys back here when I start the pears hey friends welcome back I am just about to add the sugar to the stainless steel pot and bring the mixture to a boil for 15 minutes remove from heat and test gel if gel stage has been reached, skim off foam. Um, um, blah, blah, blah. So it says it makes seven, eight ounce jars. So I got my jars ready. And let's see what the recipe looks like in the pan and then I need to add the sugar two and a third cups so this is what the beautiful mixture looks like it is a bag of pears so probably like 12 or 13 medium-sized pears and then I grated up uh, two hunks of ginger root brushed ginger root um, and I grated it up with my food mill where did it go let me show you guys what I'm talking about. This, I grated up the ginger root with this, and then I zested and peeled the lime skins into the pot, and I also juiced the limes, three limes, and just to make it safe, I went ahead and added some lime juice from a bottle that I had. So I've got the lime juice, the ginger root, the pears in here, and now I need to add the sugar and get this going to heat up. So I will do that and bring you guys back here as soon as it's time to put these stuff in a jar. Look how pretty this stuff is. Ginger lime pear preserves. Um, I still have a little bit more to jar up and then I'm going to get the water bath canner going. Here it is. Here it is the ginger preserves well the ginger lime pear preserves um we just ate what i didn't can there was like probably two ounces or less that i couldn't fit in a jar and we ate it on the pork chops we just grilled and my husband said it's delicious so that makes me happy and the other jars are the bread and butter pickles so another round of pickles here we come, and I'm pretty excited for the ginger pear preserves because it tastes good on pork chops, so we eat a lot of pork chops around here. Um, that's pretty much all I have for today, guys. I have had it for the day. I did a lot of food preservation, and my little legs are pooped, so um, I guess I'll be back for another installment in the morning, and thank you so much for joining me. I will see you guys next time. Yeah, I said I was going to go to bed, but now I'm out here watering the cabbage just to make sure these guys have enough to drink. It was 100 degrees here today, so don't want the girls to get thirsty. I think most of the broccoli is going to make it. I have one cauliflower plant that doesn't look like it's going to make it. It looks a little bit sad. Like somebody at the tops off of it. <sighs> this will be exciting. Yeah, those two don't look too good. That one and that one. Those two right there are looking a little questionable. It looks questionable to me. Do you guys know what movie that is? It looks questionable to me. Look, I just picked my first daikon radish. Oh my god, I'm so excited. Um I think I'm going to make the daikon radish and carrot recipe that I've seen. Um, probably not this evening, but 
Now that I know that my radishes are ready, I'm going to pick my daikon radishes and then quite possibly plant some more carrots over here. Um, this is beyond exciting. I am so happy. And now I could make um, kimchi too. There's a bunch of Asian recipes I'm wanting to make. So this is the first step. Daikon radishes are a key component. And I would say my daikon radishes are ready, so I'm probably going to harvest them tomorrow. <sighs> okay, this is the recipe that I'm talking about. Vietnamese carrot and daikon pickle. Oh my god! Um, so it's white vinegar, water, sugar, ginger root, which I have. Carrots daikon radishes which I'll have and six whole star anise and it's a water bath canning process that takes 10 minutes I am super into it daikon looks like a large white carrot and can be found in many supermarkets or at Asian markets so I'm gonna make this at some point because I eat a lot of rice and I love it on just about anything. Rice is like one of the best accompaniments. So it says these pretty strands of orange and white pickle are the perfect accompaniment to any Southeast Asian meal, whether it is simply fried rice or curry served over a bed of rice. So um, I am super, super excited. I specifically grew these daikon radishes so that I could can them. And yeah gonna have to harvest the rest of those tomorrow and then it looks like on Thursday I will be canning daikon radishes and carrots hey guys um, I am closing out my video with this I wanted to draw some attention to my GoFundMe because I'm trying to get bees on the farm and to do that I need funds which I am definitely lacking so if you can look for my GoFundMe, it's in my link tree, it's in my description box. And if you can't donate, I understand, but please share it so that it can reach somebody who can. Um, I would really appreciate that. And please don't forget to like my video, subscribe to my channel, share my content. And thank you so much for watching and I will see you guys later.